Yeehaw. This is uh, episode five. What's going on, everybody? Season two, episode five. Uh, before we before we really get into things here today, Josh, um, I think you and I both owe a public apology um, to our, our short king, Lissandro Martinez. Uh, heard, heard we were talking shit on the pod and went and put in a 10 out of 10 performance about two and a half hours after time of record, before time of recording, uh, Liverpool versus Man United. Um, I'll never again speak down on a fellow man under 5'8". Yeah, that was tough. Uh, also tough. Probably owe an apology to Lucas and West Ham fans as well, considering we're uh, two points above them in the table. So <laughs> we, uh, we we love to throw out the banter on the Instagram. If you notice, the the timeline likes to go quiet when Liverpool doesn't put in a shift. Uh, any complaints, reach out to the admin, but don't know if anything will change. Yeah, probably not. Um, I mean, it's probably a good place to start with just, like, the game. Um, how are you guys feeling after that one? Um, to me, it feels like the, the midfield you started is really where, you know, you, you lost the game from the get-go. Um starting James Milner in your midfield three in 2022 is hysterical and having to do that two games in a row or yeah, yeah for two of your first three uh you're missing Tiago but I mean outside of that I'll uh, kick it over to you guys to talk about how you feel yeah I mean we just weren't good enough today United were the team uh better by miles and miles uh you kind of I, I guess I'll give him credit I don't like to but uh, midfield is where it went wrong. Elliot, I, I forget what game it was last year. It might have been like Inter Milan at home when we lost, where he kind of just like didn't look. Or no, it wouldn't have been Inter Milan. It would have been later in the season. But he didn't really just like look up to pace. Uh, and it kind of felt like that a little bit tonight. Uh, couldn't really, you know, keep control of the ball. I thought Milner was really bad. Uh, but again, no fault of his own. He's given his 100%. I just don't think he's probably quality to be starting away at Man United in the Premier League. And Henderson didn't have a great game as well. He probably is, you know, the root cause of the second goal, giving the ball away in midfield. Uh, so, yeah, it kind of all starts from there. But the defense, I think, is equally to blame with Van Dyke and Gomez. Uh, Van Dyke at fault for the first goal. I thought Gomez could have done better with Rashford on the second one. So, a lot of, lot of fingers um pointing and a lot of people at blame tonight yeah um, 100 percent um you know i would i would say going into the game in the position we're in with the amount of uh absences from the squad it is a challenge um and we were very clearly given uh, a live look at how important depth is uh in the 2022 Premier League season. Uh, week three, it's a frustrating result. I actually kind of have a different view on Harvey Elliott's performance tonight than Josh might. Um, I didn't think that it was necessarily his job to to hold the ball and, and spread it in the first half. I think it changed a lot in the second half. But I thought what his predominant role was doing, and he was doing it well, was driving and trying to be that creative midfield player. But that is where we miss Tiago the most. Like, he was doing a lot of opening up play in the midfield. But I think the, the Milner game that we just saw was the bigger shortcoming. Because as a veteran, that's just a, a bad performance to put in in my opinion. Again, but it's no fault of his own. I think he's given 100%. I just don't think it's necessarily there in terms of quality. Right. Um, and then I, I thought Diaz was probably our best player. Again, um, won two yellow cards for United Defenders, was trying to be as creative as possible. It was just a frustrating night. I feel like I saw this coming from a mile away. Um unfortunately and it and it happened and here we are i feel like allison was our best player to be honest <laughs> he made a couple good saves tonight he uh, made a couple good saves but it shouldn't it shouldn't have to come to that no it shouldn't but uh i don't know they're just our team looked porous tonight there was just holes all over the place looked like we were running in quicksand at times 
Um, like I said, I think Van Dyke and Trent defensively just look disinterested tonight, disengaged. Milner got in his face, which I fucking love James Milner doing, by the way. Even when he's not on it, you know, he knows that Van Dyke should demand more of himself, and he should have in that scenario for the first goal. I have no idea why he just put his hands behind his back and decided to watch Sancho put it in. Uh, so there, there are a few moments that stand out to me just really bad, but, you know, they were just better than us for 90 minutes for the most part. And the, the most concerning thing of this is that it's seven games in a row we've conceded the first goal, which is just so shocking. Yeah, it's um, it's not a stat you want to have if you want to win a, a league title or find success or have those memorable seasons that people will uh, uh, allegedly remember if if you get the big pieces of silverware. Um, I don't know. It's just it's a frustrating result. I um, I don't necessarily think United were like miles, miles ahead of us. I just I think we didn't show up and we didn't capitalize on the little little results that we needed to. The little things mattered today, and it was a it was a complete lack of chemistry through and through. It was it was yeah. like our defensive line had never never played a game together. It was like they went to the fucking high school gym and played men's league futsal. Like it was it was just. It was a disingenuous Liverpool game. I um, I think I really do have to ag- agree with Mitch for the most part, just on that point. I, d- I do think it was more of a case of Liverpool being, like, uncharacteristically poor more than it was United playing well. I'll give United some credit. I do think that they capitalized on the fact that you were all having an off day, and I thought the front three looked really, really bright. I thought Dalo had a good game, and I thought... Alonga looked bright going forward, and I thought Rashford had one of the best games I've seen Rashford play in a really, really, really long time. But I mean, outside of that, and, and Martinez too. I think Martinez was my man in the match. He was imperious back there for Man U- or for United. But I think yeah, if you I, look at running stats, I don't know United that first half. I think they would have been beating most sides in the Prem. That, that was one of the best forty fives United has put in in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I still just think that like quality of play, they weren't that much better than you they outworked you they wanted it more at the end of the day as like american as that sounds they wanted it more. They, they they absolutely outworked you and i think that's really what kind of pushed them over the line so to speak yeah i mean fair play it's yeah on to bournemouth uh, i think that's probably the best team you could hope to play for after a three-game winless streak so hopefully we get back to winning ways and uh doesn't get easier though we have newcastle and everton after that so are you, are you guys nervous at all for Bournemouth, no. Just in general, just with first three games of the season out of the way, are you are you feeling any heat whatsoever? No. Just because I think in these scenarios you have to stay calm. We've already been through probably the worst stretch under Klopp, which was that six-game winless streak at Anfield, um, or the six-game losing streak in the COVID year. Uh that was pretty fucking bad. This is not that. We, I think there's explanations as to why things are going wrong right now, and a lot of it has to do with fitness, um, mm-hmm. getting players back, maybe getting another midfielder. I think we have to stay calm. If we don't stay calm, I think we're putting ourselves down to the level of Tottenham and Arsenal uh, by ranting and stuff like that. We just got to get through it. Mm. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm nervous to a degree but it is it's not like uh throw it all away light the team on fire get everybody out of the fucking club nervous it's we know better all the pieces of the puzzle are there it's just i don't want it to linger on longer than it needs to i don't want this this kind of hiccupy start to the season where we're not being able to get those goals and find our footing when it matters, I don't want that to extend into week week ten. I, like, yeah. it, it can't. So yeah, I, mean, I would sense. I would say I would say I'm I have my eye on it, but I'm not I'm not ready to throw in the towel on them yet. I think I was just kind of like I, I I think I'm like neutral because I was kind of thinking mm. it would happen to begin with. I guess. Makes sense. Makes I also sense, redact. Yeah. I redact my Harvey Elliott statement. I had a second to think about that. I think I'm. I'm not sure what player I was thinking of when I was in that comparison, but uh, Mitch is probably right. He, we probably shouldn't rely on a 19, 20 year old to create from the midfield against Man United away from home. 
Uh, yeah, that's probably not the best idea. Um, do we want to uh, do we want to jump over to me, or do we want to talk about the probably biggest shock result of the weekend? Uh, oh, let's start with Leeds Chelsea. Let's uh, yeah. God bless America. Yeah, fucking awesome. Leeds are America's team. Uh, they were phenomenal. They came out and did not give Chelsea any room to breathe. Um, I was unbelievably impressed with them, you know, top to bottom. I thought, uh, name is escaping me, goalkeeper. thought he played a great game. Uh, Hell yeah. Aaron was really good. I thought Tyler Adams was phenomenal in the midfield. I thought um, came from City, Jack Harrison. I thought Jack Harrison yeah. was incredible too for the whole 90 minutes. Um, they're awesome. They're incredible. They're amazing. Leads are staying up. Yeah, the environment too at Ellen Road just looks bonkers. Uh, oh, rocking. Yeah, I mean, I, I love to see results like that too. Just it's it's fun. Keeps the Premier League interesting. It's why it's the best league in the world. Any team can win on any given day. Um, and Chelsea just were miles off it. I mean, you can go yeah. from the goalkeeper all the way to up top, Kai Havertz. Uh, you know, and Gallagher in the middle. Uh, <laughs> talk about gaping holes. Chelsea were that. They were, they were not very good. Uh, do, do we think that no striker is really, you know, starting to rear rear its head for them? They they looked like they were crying out for someone to just take some of the chances they create or cause a defense trouble, make some more runs in behind. Um, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. Yes, goals are important, but I think the bigger issue was the, the dumb Cooley Volley red. I think. That was still late in the game, though. I don't think that I, that I, I, But he's playing, on a, he's playing on an early yellow. Like, I think the defensive question mark for Chelsea is a bigger red flag because much like City, they've been playing without a striker. They've had to figure out, like, they won a Champions League without really somebody who was filling that role. Um, I, I think I think it's a bigger issue on the defensive side of the ball for Chelsea if they're allowing that Leeds team to do what they did and frustrate them enough to get a, a kind of a, a lazy second yellow for Koulibaly that late in the game. Yeah, that was one of the stupidest second yellows I've ever seen. It just, yeah, took out his nice. frustrations on a 19 year old kid that burnt him he body slammed him not really it's that's probably a little bit of hyperbole but a little just completely dragged him across, he, he cross chest him just pulled him down from behind like i just i i feel like lee uh, jesse marsh put out a great side had a great plan stuck to it ran the ball up the left side of the field all day uh through harrison and you know a couple of dumb mistakes uh from mendy you know uh, but at the end of the day, I think Leeds went out and just outperformed and was able to to really kind of put that glaring hole or question mark in a in a bigger kind of magnifying glass, a bigger vacuum, if you will. Reese James mm -hmm. getting bodied at the back post too, but no one will talk about it because he's not Trent. Uh, they were talking about it when Trent got bodied at the back post week one. So well, and yeah, that's exactly my point. <laughs> no one talked about Reese James having a shocker. Uh, the whole Chelsea team is just ass, to be fair. Um, that's about it, really. They Chelsea were super off the pace, and Leeds were unbelievable over the weekend. Um, God bless America. Honestly, yeah. Uh, another team that were unbelievable, and uh, very fortunate to see my team walk away with a point in that game was Newcastle. They were mm. blistering. Uh, St. James Park, again, talking about atmospheres a lot. St. James Park was going mental. Uh, yeah. When that, that trip year goal went in, the, the whole place erupted. Uh, yeah, well, that was an incredible game of football. Um, you guys, you guys want to give your two cents on it before I kind of have my say? ASM was awesome. Pope was awesome. Almirion was awesome. It was a, what, a, probably the game of the season so far. I mean, what can you not like about that game? Had possible red cards, a wonder free kick, comebacks. Uh, just a great 90 minutes of football for the neutral. It was mm. a lot of fun to watch. And, I, like, with the um, with the Trippier um, kind of question mark red card, too, I think that is exactly how VAR should have been operating from the get-go, where it's called red on the field. They look at it situationally. 
make a decision after the fact. I I I respect them taking a second look at that too. Um, no, all in all, I think it was a really, 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 really good game from a neutral perspective. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, my only notes on it were three goals, one assist in Holland's first three games. Um, uh, the, you know, the last player to play their first three games for Man City and get three goals and one assist in their first three. Aguero. Sergio Aguero. Dick hat. Uh, he, he looks like, you know, every bit the player that we signed. Um, Kevin De Bruyne, best player in the league. That pass he had for the equalizer was absurd. He was, you know, a little a little shaky for the first, like, 15, 20 minutes of the game, but I thought after that, you know, he, he drug us back into that game. He's one of the only players that felt like he was on the pace to, like, pull us back into that tie. Um, Gundawan, great still, getting in the goals, doing the, doing what he does best, which is just being, like, all over the place. Um, it's crazy to say it because it feels like a bit of a weird comparison, but he feels very Lampard-esque with, you know, where he's been popping up in this, just the positions he picks up over the past couple of years. Obviously, Lampard did it much better than he did, but he is a, being, you know, like a Lampard-esque type of player for us, and that's been really good these past couple of years. Um, I was also super impressed with, with St. Maxman. He was unbelievable. Uh, Kyle Walker had one of his worst games in the city <laughs> shirt. Kyle Walker looked like dog shit, dude. Could not keep with St. Maxman. And I think it was partially because for whatever reason, um, he was playing that inverted fullback role instead of Cancelo uh, against Newcastle, and that really did not suit him uh, that game at all. Doesn't help um, with Bernardo probably not giving him much help on defense either. <laughs> yeah, when when he... Uh, I think Bernardo... Well, I mean, the right wing doesn't normally do that much either. I think Bernardo was fine. You know, I, I think outside of his goal, the right wing really isn't his place, but I think the run he made for that goal was phenomenal um yeah that great game of football city still undefeated um and you know uh, after a pretty you you would expect west ham and newcastle to be difficult games for city and for the most part i think you know we came away came away all right those are the first goals we conceded in all season so far it's only been three games but we'll take that thought it was thought it was a good performance overall very fun game to watch um you want to talk about Holland for just a second more, Pat? Have you saw a striker really like him with his pace and power in recent memory? Absolutely not. I he feels like a, a freak anomaly to me. He is, you know, that pass he played to De Bruyne too. Yeah. Um, in the first half, there a lot of people put question marks around his ability to get involved in play and to to link up, and I think that these past few games he has certainly been proving people wrong that he can absolutely play that role in our side obviously it's going to take him a little bit more time to get fully integrated um i think a lot of people looked at holland as a player when he came to city and were like this is you know he's going to score a lot of goals and he's but he's not really going to like develop much as a player and i think that it's a a scary proposition to to say this but i think it's true I, i think He's genuinely going to get better. He's going to become a better overall footballer. Um, and that is unbelievable to think about, I think, when you look at a player like him. But I, he, I've, I've been super impressed with him, and I think his overall game is just going to continue to improve in the city side, and he's going to add a ton to this team. Yeah, my mind just goes back to that one that uh, I think Pope saved it, but he like just wiggles through Shar and Botman. Uh, yeah. And it just, like, it's just power completely i mean he he has speed in it too because he beats them and then just like muscles out both of them it was incredible like yeah it's almost, almost a carbon copy of the west ham goal he yeah. scored it's like zero to 60 in half a second like he just busted out of the the double challenge so fast and with such grace like he he is an unbelievably talented uh forward and i i think he's gonna do wonders for you guys unfortunately i love it um Last game of the weekend, really. We can kind of gloss over this one quickly, but, you know, um, do we have to apologize to West Ham that much, Josh? Because they <laughs> lost Brighton this weekend. Yeah, that was a bad one, too. I, I don't like Declan Rice's comments after the game, either. I think that's a little uh, piss-poor in terms of, like, just being 
disappointed with the fans booing and uh the comment about you know we're not man city we're not going to win the premier league just seems a little bit uh, so it, it just seems like a weird thing for a professional footballer to say i think even though if it's like something that goes unsaid and is obvious i think it's something you don't say out loud to the press yeah uh, that was odd that was really really odd um uh, to, to hear him say that yeah, I don't Especially know. as captain, I mean, like, what expectations are you setting in the dressing room if... I mean, I get, like, you can put top four or top six as a goal, but, like, to just come out and flat say, like, we're not Man City, we're not going to win the Premier League seems such an... That's, like, such a pessimistic view to take. Yeah. How yeah. does Leicester City win at 5,000 to 1? Yeah. If, you know, like, you, you cut yourself off from experiencing that high of beating City if you think like that. And right, yeah, you don't... Know, you're setting that precedent for everybody else. Yeah, not keeping the belief. You know, it's it's just odd. That's it's odd behavior from him. West Ham don't look great. I think I, I don't. I think Moyes' job is probably fine, but still I not a goal like, in the side. Yeah, something's got to change. They've got to find some some kind of form. You know. Yeah. Um, I know we said that was the last game, but I do just want to. I know your answer to this, Josh. So I'm going to ask Mitch this question, and then you can chime in after. <laughs> Um, our our Arsenal. Are we are we thinking about Arsenal yet? Arsenal. Only team to win all three of their opening games. They look very very good. Are we are we putting them in in any conversations yet, or is it too early? I I I think I'm gonna use a, a line a, a hungry mustache eater once said. Uh, I think there's plenty of time for good teams to be good and bad teams to be bad. Uh, I think the top of the table is going to shake out more normal than we think. I think it is a night and day start to the season for Arsenal. Obviously, they are on cloud nine, and I think it makes it look a little bit better being where they were this time last year. I'm not going to count them out, though. I mean, I had them in my, my top four. Um, I, fair, think, fair. I think they're a strong team, and I think they're a lot of fun to watch so far. Hmm. No, I just figured we could, you know, it, I think it needs to be said that they have started every bit as good as a lot of people expected them to. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, they, they deserve this start, honestly. After all the, the work they've put in, um, and after the kind of the, the end of last year, bringing Saliba back in, I think has been huge. Um, Gabriel looks like a solid defender this weekend. Josh, thoughts on that? I mean, like I said, Mitchell, and I'm not sure how well you versed you are with the cherries, but Philip Billing is a defensive midfielder starting at striker. I'm not going to be impressed with the defensive performance against Mr. Philip Billing. <laughs> Holy fuck. Um, hey, at the end of the day, Arsenal are looking strong, and Gabriel is a part of it. Um, so. I think we can hold some reservations on Arsenal until September 4th. Sunday, September 4th. They play yeah, United. Hurt. And that's I think two weeks. We give Arsenal two more weeks. If they're five and zero after two weeks, I think we have to start thinking about them. In the top four. Weeks. Yeah, I think we have to start start considering it could be a possibility. If they go out and they look really good at Old Trafford, I think we can start seriously entertaining the thought. Um, and then they play you guys in October, almost a month later. So that's another big test for them as well. But. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Uh, pretty lackluster start so far from uh, from the Anfield, Anfield side. Yeah, I mean, you guys. Are yeah, that we saw a month we're, a we're, month we're, out. We're, right, yeah. but we've already been bit by the injury bug. Like, I'm just I'm trying to be realistic that you know it's not. I don't have the same aura that I've had in past years yet. This team hasn't earned it yet from me in these three games. They need to go back out and re-earn it, in my opinion. Did you say that... this team aura? What are you, Van Dyke? Yeah, I fucking am. Man bun and all. I got the goatee. 
I got the chinny. <laughs> Tired of you. Uh, I don't really no, think I... there's much to talk about this weekend in terms yeah. of games. Um, yeah. There's like some midweek stuff that might be interesting to go over. You guys go to Newcastle next week. Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth. Well, you go to Bournemouth this weekend, and then you go to Newcastle on yes. Wednesday. Yes. Uh, midweek, yeah. Because we're cramming all Got these it. fixtures in right in the, in the middle of the year so we can get everything in before the World Cup. Um, so stupid. I'm looking at the fixtures for the weekend. I think the only really slightly interesting ones are we host Palace, which is just like a bogey game for City, so we might drop more points there. Um, but outside of that, I'm not really sure. Arsenal, I'll... Fulham. Yeah, Fulham is good and Arsenal, so that could be a good one. And then a good chance for West Ham to maybe pick up points against the Villa side, who've also looked kind of ass to start the season. It's a tough one for Gerrard. <laughs> that's like a, a must-win game for him against a side that's definitely capable of beating them. And the side that also desperately needs a win. Yeah. Um, so looking forward to this weekend overall. We're not really going to do too much re- or preview today. We we did the review. We'll, we'll kind of dive more into stuff those games next week um quick fpl update because I, it feels like it's only right to just you know give at least a, a broad overview every week um we're fucking ass yeah not a good week really bad fantasy week for us um we have dropped to sixth place and then uh, the, the ghost team lfc rick has dropped to seventh so It'll real come back tough up. real tough week for the squad um, I mean, but outside of that, we'll we'll bounce back. We're we're gonna. I think the transfer we've talked about is finally getting Kovacic out and bringing in an inform Odegaard. But yeah. usually, when we bring in a player who's informed, they do absolutely nothing the following week. So we'll see. I, I think I think it goes deeper than that. Um, well, last year we did have the main stand therapy sessions, and the the main stand fan therapy helped people. Um, this year it seems like we've had this like kind of like trail behind us like every time we have a conversation like we talk Everton DCL goes down we talk uh we talk about West Ham we talk about United they beat us you know like these these things keep happening and I'm starting to think that we we got hexed by somebody they don't beat us they beat you that's there's a difference yeah that's true you know what I meant nah I'm not a Liverpool fan um, Democratically speaking, there's you're you're thirty three percent of the podcast, so <laughs> you're one third a Liverpudlian. That's not true at all. I'm uh, I'm negative seven percent a Liverpool fan. Let's uh switch it up into some some funnier, happier news. Uh, we'll we'll do out of bounds first, and then we'll get into the Moke and Gladback minute. Yes, I probably butchered that pronunciation. Um, for- Gladbach. Munch and Gladbach. Uh, <laughs> out of bounds. We have three more topics again today. Uh, first thing I want to kick it off with is is the the U.S. Men's National Team World Cup jersey leaks. Um, ass. Yeah, ass. Uh, but not only the jersey leaks, the players coming out. That's a tough look. When the players are coming out and they're giving some stick to the jersey, it's not a good look. Weston McKinney saying we tried to tell him. When Tim Weah, too. <laughs> He was like, they're awful. I, they're so bad. It's just, if, if there's anyone out here who listens to this podcast and is a kit designer, for the love of God, stop making heat map camo print jerseys. They suck. I'm tired of seeing them. And rinse. The white one's bad, too. It's just, it's like plain jerseys are fine. That is too plain. It's a World yeah, Cup year. They should be insane. They should be the best kits we've produced in the last four years minimum they kind of look like the the generic kits you get for the the international clubs in fifa yeah just like don't actually have like what turkey uh some some asian countries japan like those those japan's jerseys are fire (laughs) they are fire but like if you're loading up the game and you get this shit ass jersey it makes it hard to get up for it I can't imagine what it's like actually having to put those on and get up to play for your country in a World Cup. I, feel I would like, be miserable. 
I feel like they care a little bit less because they're playing on the world stage. Care a little bit less, but like they, they look ass. They're really bad. Yeah, shame, they're dog shit. Shame on the kit designer because you you had eight years to essentially come up with this. Yeah, uh, three. Not four. Three. You had eight. We took a cycle off. You couldn't yeah. give us a good one for yep. finally getting back. Yep. Next topic uh, in two days. Welcome to Wrexham starts. I am so excited for this. I think it's going to blow the uh, Arsenal one out of the water just because you have filmmakers behind it. Uh, I love like non-league football too. I just find that so interesting. Not not that Wrexham are non-league. I shouldn't say that, but lower league football. I, um, I think it's just going to be funny. I think it's going to be a – your your perfect blend of an all or nothing and a Ted Lasso. I think, I think it's, it's gonna be better than I think all or nothings kind of suck. If I'm being honest, I I like the more of the style of like the Sunderland till I die. Yeah. Um, me and my fiance started watching uh D- when Eagles Dare too about the twenty like twelve uh Crystal Palace side that survived relegation. Uh, I like stuff like that. The all or nothing stuff. It's so hard to get into. Uh, especially when like the new season starts and that's when it's coming out and there's no like real storyline behind it. I don't know. Right. It's better. It, I guess all or nothing's better to kind of go back on to relive some of those moments Yeah. and kind of like get an understanding. Like if it's a really hard season or a good season for a particular club, if it lines up right, that's when it's better. Um, and I think with this one in particular, the year Arsenal had, it makes it more interesting and people are going to want to go out and see, yo, they were in last place for fucking the first third of the season. And then they come out of the grave and, and fight for Europe. You know, they're, they're, they're right in the mix. So I think, I think it's going to be fun to see it from a different perspective. Obviously as Americans, we love the owners um, in, in the comedic world. If we're watching movies, um and, and TV shows, so mm. it's it's gonna be cool to kind of see the behind the scenes from from that for sure. I think uh too, it's like we'll learn something from it too. With the Arsenal one, you're not necessarily learning anything about Arsenal. There's right. I think we don't know anything about Wrexham, so it's kind of from ground zero there. Um, and then the last thing, Ivan Tony versus uh Mitrovic, just a funny funny rivalry. Tony doing the the ear thing. The, I don't know what that is, but the celebration after he scored at the weekend and then Mitrovic coming out. Uh, I don't know if it, it was on an interview or social media, but saying that, you know, Tony is probably like a closet Mitro fan. Uh, it's just a funny, <laughs> funny back and forth. I think that was um, Michu did that, right? Yes. I know Hollins does it because of Michu, because for whatever reason, Michu is one of Hollins' favorite players. That's so funny. No, it's a it's a good rivalry, and it's two players that uh you know going at it that you just I mean you couldn't pick two opposite people or human beings than than Mitrovic and Ivan Tony. It's gen- genuinely one of the most like left field things I've ever oh. seen or heard. Just I did not expect those two players to be beefing at any point in their <laughs> career, let alone right now. Yep. That's all I had for Out of Bounds, though. That was my three topics of the week, so we can give it over to Pat for the Gladback Minute. All right, so welcome welcome to this week's iteration of Gladback Minute. I'll keep it short. Um, we're second in the league table. Pretty good, pretty good. What's not good is uh, Bayern Munich have scored 15 and conceded one in their opening three games of the Bundesliga season, and we have to go to the Allianz this weekend to play Bayern at the top of the table. Um, I'm not feeling good about this one. It's not going to be a 5 mil like it was last year. Um, I think Bayern are beating us 2 nil this weekend, and we're going to do everything in our power to get second place back the following week. But um, Bayern look unstoppable in the Bundesliga right now. Uh, but we look good. We look good. We, uh, we, we won at the weekend. Nice little win. So, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get. I'm, I'm proud of the fellas for doing their thing and not collapsing like Dortmund did against Bremen. Nice nice 1-0 win against Hertha Berlin. So we take that. A play, a penalty, 34th minute. Good to go. And that was a bunch of Gladbach minutes. That was, uh, that was approximately a minute. You're getting pretty good at that. That's what I do. 
I think it's it's a short week here. I think uh, I don't know how many how many times in the future we're gonna record an episode after a, a one of our teams loses a tough rivalry game. It's hard like it's to want to very talk low energy. Football. It makes it very hard to want to talk footy. Very uh, low like, energy, but uh, I think uh, you know we had a nice short episode tonight. I could have done the episode by myself if I needed to, guys. Just let me know. <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. We'll, we'll, let, the, we'll yeah. let the people go back about their day. It's a short episode today. It's a short episode. We'll have stuff coming out on the Instagram though. Stay in tune. Get on the reel. Get in our, our get in the main stand algorithm. Uh, Tap in. Honestly, subscribe. Josh, we're gonna we're gonna need you to be our ringer next week because this weekend Pat and I are not gonna be able to watch a lot of footy. We what? got a wedding. Yeah, we're gonna I need have... you mean a wedding all weekend. Yes, I have commitments as well, but I probably will get down to the zoo in the morning and watch, uh, watch some awesome. stuff going on. Yeah, the zoo. Shout out, Bird. Thanks for taking care of us this weekend again. Yeah, Mitch, you're insane. No, we'll just leave that there. But <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to the podcast if you haven't. Like, share it with your friends. Uh, we'll be back next week. Deuces. Deuce. Peace.